God bless you, family. God, welcome to the morning Devo with your brother DJ Sam Rock. God bless you. I hope you're having a great morning. Um, I'm a little late, but I'm here. Amen. Um, yeah, I'm here. So God is good. We're gonna today. We're gonna really wake up. I hope you are ready for this. And before I start, just got to let you know, guys and girls, that I love you guys. You know what I mean. So I hope this doesn't come off like um, some kind of um, judgmental thing. But um, God prompted me to speak this, so we're going to talk it. Amen. I'm only repeating what I'm hearing from the Lord. Amen. And so that way I have to let you know that I love you. This is no, you know, throw at anybody. This is no, you know, sub or no anything. This is out of love and it's dealing with me too. So we're all in this together. Amen. Because God loves us and he wants us to move from point A to point B. He wants us to grow spiritually. This is part two. I started this yesterday in the morning, Devo. And there was so much more. I said, let me just do another part to get this active, right, in my life and in your life. Amen. Um, if you choose to do so, right. It's all by choice. All decision making right here going on. All of it from beginning to end. It's us deciding to do what God wants us to do or not. It's a very, you know, conscious decision that we make. Amen. Um, to get in involved with what God wants us to get involved with. So we got some people on here. Let me just give some good mornings real quick. Good morning, Brother Damien. God bless you, man. Welcome to the Morning Devo. Sister Joyce, oh, my, my, my mouse is acting funny. Sister Joyce, God bless you. Amen. Welcome to the Morning Devo as well. Have a good morning. Have a good day so far. Michael Jakes, pastor and my friend. Praise the Lord. Yes, praise him all the time. You already know, uh, Pastor. And Jerry, what's up, brother? Amen. Good morning, good morning, good morning. So, the question I have on the table is this. Why trying to manage our sin really doesn't work? Why managing sin doesn't work? A lot of people think that when you get saved, it's all about behavior management. Yeah, your behavior will change, man. My behavior changed, right? And it was because my outside, my outer behavior changed because of the inner Savior in me. And the inner Savior in me remains. And that's why I'm changing. There's only one reason why I'm changing is because the word of God says, whosoever calls on the name of the Lord Jesus Christ of Nazareth shall be saved. And you go to God the way you are. And I can guarantee you, if you trust and believe in him, you will not be the same and you will grow and you will grow. Carly, good morning. God bless you. Welcome to the morning Devo. So listen, let's do this. I haven't even shared this out yet. I was oh, busy trying to get this on. Also, if you know somebody right now, that doesn't have social media, but you want them to hear this. You want them to be involved. They could hear it. The podcast is live right now as well. So I'm podcasting this live. And also, um, you could just send them to soulwinnerswithaz.org, right? It's a website, and all they got to do is press play either on the video portion or they could press play on the podcast. If they're maybe they're running, maybe they're driving long distance, and they could just listen. So God prompted somebody on your heart right now. You could share soulwinnerswithaz.org. Tell them, hey, just click on um, this website, press play on the player or on the video player. And either way, they're going to be locked in with us and we're going to keep it moving like that. All right. So if you have any questions, comments, prayer requests or, or concern or anything like that, you can do it right now. I apologize for looking down. I'm just going to get my phone ready to start sharing. And you could do that right now. If not, I'm going to pray. Over this morning, Devo, I'm going to pray over your life. I'm going to pray over my life because I need prayer every day. And I believe you need prayer every day too. I think we need to pray for one another every day. Whoever God puts in your mind, pray. You know, um, yesterday was a little weird because I was thinking some thoughts and then some people came in my thoughts. So I said, well, might as well pray for those people, right? Um, whether it was a good thought or a bad thought, let me just pray. And while I was praying for the people that God was putting in my, my mind, you know, all the all the other thoughts that weren't really holy or whatever, they started going away. I'm just saying they started going away because I believe that God honors the prayers of his children. He honors the prayers of the righteous and the righteous when we pray. And I'm not righteous because I'm saying I'm righteous. I'm righteous because I'm born again. And God says he's righteous. So I'm righteous. God says he's holy. So I'm, I'm holy once you're born again. Right. So I'm just repeating what God is saying. So when I pray, I believe that he answers the prayer according to his will and purpose for the prayer. There's a promise over my prayer and there's a promise over your prayer if you're born again. So no prayer requests now. Okay, so what I'm going to do is I'm going to pray 
and then we'll take a minute to share this out. And remember, if you want to share this out, I got to put this on. I got to fix that. Put the website so that way you know where to send the people. I'll probably put a link going forward so that way all you got to do is click the link or all you got to do is send the link. Soulwinnerswithaz.org. I left it right there on the front page. This video and the podcast is, is live right now. So, Father, in the name of Jesus, I thank you for this morning, for this day. Thank you for waking us up. Thank you for keeping us safe. Thank you. Thank you for healing our sickness and disease. Thank you for saving us. Thank you for giving us an opportunity to be saved and to be rescued and to have this born again experience on this side of eternity. I pray a hedge of protection over every single viewer, every single listener right now, them and their family, their whole bloodline from the youngest family member to the oldest family member. I pray peace be still over every single listener and a viewer in the name of Jesus. I ask Lord God that any demonic oppression, any demonic activity that's trying to distract us, that you would deal with it by way of your Holy Spirit and that it will be eradicated and it will be cast out in Jesus' name. That we can focus on you, the author and finisher of our faith. And when trials and trouble do come, we know that we're not alone. That you are walking through the trials and through the troubles with us. Because you are a God who saves. You are a God who rescues. You are a God who is present in our time of need. So I speak life going forward. And I speak death to those things that lead to death. And I speak life to those things that lead to life. And I speak forth archwing angels. I speak forth ministering angels right now to deal with all the demonic angels right now that is trying to distract trying to attract us back into the world. I pray against that in the name of Jesus, and I pray for the powerful angelic hosts to move on behalf of this prayer. In Jesus' name, I pray this by faith. Amen and amen. So let's take a minute. We'll share this out, and then when we come back, we'll jump right into why managing your sin really doesn't work because we need to grow spiritually. This is part two on The Morning Diva with your brother, DJ Sam Rock. I'll be right back. Let's get into it, ladies and gentlemen. Let's get into it. Someone, if you was with me on last night, you know where I'm going with this. But if not, then this is all new. Maybe you met me for the first time. Maybe you're on for the first time. I want to welcome you. There's no coincidence. I don't believe in no coincidences. I don't believe in luck. I believe in divine appointments. And I used to believe in luck. But like that's for gambling. Chance, you know, chance is really not a term. Chance is a word we made up to say that, hey, we don't know what's going to happen. Let's take our chance, right? But God doesn't deal with luck and chance. God deals with divine appointments. He positions us. He sends forth his word. He empowers us to do exactly what he wants us to do. Amen. And if he says we could do a thing, we could do that thing. So you'll know where I'm going if you was with me last night on the live podcast, right? On the Blaze Bible Study. But if not, just listen in. And I, I promise you, God will speak to you. Some way in some form. Um, Someone who believes they are a sinner saved by grace tends to focus on sin management more than pursuing intimacy with God. Somebody, I'm going to say it again. Someone who believes they are a sinner saved by grace tends to focus on sin management more than pursuing intimacy with God. In other words, you're always like, oh, I can't do that. Oh, I better watch out. Oh, I better do, you know, you're always on the lookout, right? It says, man, I don't want to go that route. I don't want to do that. I don't want to. Yeah, I don't want to sin either. Right. But if I focus on my sinful nature, guess what's going to happen, ladies and gentlemen? I'm going to sin. If I'm on a certain diet and I'm trying to stay away from sweets, but I have a piece of cake in my fridge and all I'm thinking about is not touching that piece of cake. 
you know what I'm going to tend to do, right? I'm going to touch that piece of cake because I have it in my mind. I'm focused on it. I'm thinking about it. I'm pondering about it. So I'm going to do what I'm thinking about. I'm going to do what I'm pondering about. I'm going to do what I'm focused on. Normally, that's the way if I I challenge myself to stay focused on the Lord daily, because if I stay focused on the other things that the flesh wants to do, then I, I might tend to do those things. And it could be something that you might think is small. It might be just um, eating a piece of cake when you're on a diet. Or it might be staying up a little later than you should, knowing that you got to get up in the morning. Like that's what happened last night. And I just stood up, knowing that I got to get up early to do my morning Devo. Those are the things that the, the sin is trying to do in my life. you know. And there's worse things, but you know, I ain't got time to talk about my sinful nature in my mind. But I'm pretty sure you know what I'm going with that. You know where I'm going with that. You know, so uh, most of us, if we're honest, we have struggles up here and we have to stay focused because if I, if I get out of whack, man, in my, my thought process, um, things can happen. Shout out to Rapture Divine Revelation uh, for sharing this. The group Rapture Divine Revelation. Thank you so much for sharing this on your group page. If anybody has any ca- questions, comments, concerns or prayer requests, Make sure you could do it right here in the live. If you want to share something, but you kind of like don't want to share it publicly, you just want it to be private, you could always use the inbox and you could always email me at djsamrock.com, uh, djsamrock at soulwinswithaz.org. Sorry, I was looking at the other website that's on the screen right now. So if you're too busy, and this is why I manage trying to manage our sin or trying to have behavioral management really doesn't work. Because if you're too busy trying not to sin, right, um, you're going to too you're gonna be too busy. I'm telling you right now. Because everything's out there that's throwing us out there. Shout out to Christian Bible Study, non-denominational, for sharing this as well. Everything out there in the world that's being thrown at us is catering to our sin nature. You ever... You ever find yourself minding your own business, you're just driving down the road, right, or on the highway, and you see a big billboard, and the billboard has nothing to do with the product they're selling, but it just has something, a seductress picture, a seducing picture of a man or a woman, or and it has nothing to do with the product. It could be a, a you know, a commercial or a billboard about life insurance, and then you see um, half-naked woman on the beach, it has, no, it has nothing to do with nothing. Because the advertisers and the people out there are catering to the nature of our sin. And they know that what attracts our eyes, what gets us thinking differently, they'll put that billboard, they'll put that image, they'll put, now you have the digital billboards all over the place. So minding our own business doesn't mean that we don't have to be mindful of what's going on around us. But if you're too busy trying not to look at the bulletins, trying not to look at, um, the commercials, trying not to do this, trying not to do that. If you're too busy, then you're going to be too busy. You should be embracing your life as a saint instead of trying to not sin. It's much more easier that way because if you embrace who you are in Christ, you're not a sinner saved by grace anymore. You're a saint that sometimes sins. If you embrace that, you're going to have an easier time dealing with what life throws at you. And, and the world's throwing the crazy stuff at us. Rachel, God bless you. Good morning. Welcome to the morning Devo. Amen. God bless you. So I'm telling you, let's embrace who we are as a saint, right? As a born again believer and not don't get too busy trying to focus on all what not to do, because whatever you focus on, it's like driving a car. If you drive a car, you know that that drift. So if whatever way you look, you will literally drift that way. So that's why it's not cool, really. To, especially don't use your phone don't text on the phone don't text uh, while you're driving I should say because when you text while you're driving you're really not focusing on the road you're focusing on the lines of the text and they're usually small and you usually have to look at it intently it might you might think in your mind oh I'm just gonna look at it for a couple of seconds meanwhile you staring at the thing you're focused on it and it's gonna cause an accident or if you're looking to the left too much you usually will drift to the left. You look to the right too much, you usually drift to the right. That's why we're on a narrow road, right? Going straight. As a believer, we're supposed to look straight ahead. It's okay to look to the left, to the right, because we have to, you know, try to bring people with us. 
but don't focus on those things that are to the left or to the right of you. Don't focus too much on the sinful nature until you embrace, right? You should rather, rather you should embrace who you are in Christ. Embrace life as a saint. It's almost as, as if this, if you're just waiting to sin again, if you're trying to monitor your sinful nature. It's almost like, okay, uh, when, when, when am I going to sin again? You know, I knew people, and I used to do this too when I first got saved. I said, I used to be like, I can't help. I can't help but sin. I can't help. I can't help it. Where am I going to sin? Like I was almost predestined myself to sin. And that's not necessarily true. If you know the triggers that you have in your life, and I know the triggers in my life, you're going to kind of like stay away from those things that trigger these type of behaviors, right? If uh, God delivered me from sexual sin, uh, I was addicted to um, self-gratification, um, sexual self-gratification, addicted to it from the time preteen all the way to like 30 years old, right? I knew the trigger points. It was something I saw, something I heard. Uh, I knew my trigger points. And in the beginning, I didn't want to deal with it. But then reading the word, growing spiritually, I read a simple scripture to some. I wasn't even looking for it. It was that God sees all things. I'm paraphrasing it. I know it's in the Old Testament that God sees all things. Everything's made bare in the eyes of God. So I was like, I thought I was hiding my sin. And I was like, wait, God sees that? God sees all of what I'm doing? So I got disgusted with myself and God delivered me from that. Amen. And that was... 2003 or 2002 around there amen and i've been delivered from that since then amen if i'm not careful though something that i've been delivered for so many oh, like 18 years already if i start playing around with the triggers that would trigger me to think that those things or uh, focus on those things then i'm gonna have a battle on my hands and that's not god's fault that would be my fault because i know the triggers so instead of focusing on trying to, you know, focus on sin management, let's embrace our life as a saint and it will help us out better. Managing sin keeps us looking down in the bump, in the dumps. We're never quite able to see beyond the next mistake. And that's huge because it's like, oh man, I, I made another mistake. I sinned again. And then it causes all this like guilt and all this shame and guilt and shame. Listen, Jesus took that upon himself on the cross once for all. The guilt, the shame, the punishment of sin. We're not going to be punished by God again. I don't believe in the scriptures. It doesn't say we're going to be punished again if we're born again, right? Uh, I don't think that's going to happen. He took all that upon himself, yet he himself did not sin. It's an incredible message. It's the gospel. So instead of looking for the next mistake in your life, look for the next way you can embrace your sainthood your 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 brother your sister in the lord you are a child of god look for those things in the scripture concentrate on that and i can almost guarantee you that you will grow spiritually and you'll move up instead of move back and move down i'm telling you man this we're, we're all in this together no one escapes brother rich god bless you man we shouldn't focus on the commandments but rather focus on our love walk through grace we are able to love him we start out in grace but watch out, we don't try to obtain righteousness through our own efforts, but receive your position in Christ. We are the righteousness of God in Christ because of what he did, not our own efforts. Don't be sin focused, but freedom focused. Uh, um, we have the authority of grace and power of our desires, uh, excuse me, over our desires to put to death the deeds of the flesh. Yes, we do. And that's a, that's a handful of what you said. We have to walk this thing out through the love grace. You know, focusing on the commandments um, will lead you to sin. The Bible is clear on that, right? The Bible is clear that the law, the letter of the law, doesn't save us, doesn't change us. It just makes us aware of where we can fall or where we can fail. It was a precursor. It was like, it was like the document before grace is the law. Right. And all through the scripture, you find grace of God from Genesis to Revelation. But we know in the Old Testament, the law was established. We see that Moses, the commandments, we know the 10, but it was actually over 600 rabbinical codes. Right. 
Um, they even put laws upon themselves. It was crazy knowing, uh, well, I guess they didn't know that they couldn't even achieve one. You break one, you break them all, the, the word of God says. But they were establishing all these rules and these laws. And God was telling his people, listen, do this, don't do that. Because if you do that, what I'm telling you not to do, you're going to get into some big stuff. You're going to get into some big trouble. So God was actually protecting his children. He was protecting his people by setting boundaries. Just think about it. Imagine going 60 miles an hour in a city street and you're eating like 10 red lights. You're breaking the law. Somebody's going to get hurt. You yourself might get hurt. Somebody should stop you. And then you should be punished for the, doing that because you put yourself in danger. You put others in danger. When I sin, I'm putting myself in danger and others in danger. When I sin willfully, when I say, you know what? Nobody's going to know as if God doesn't see all things. Nobody's going to know. I'm just going to go 60 miles an hour in my life. I'm going to get back on the fast track and I don't care who it hurts. I just want to get my pleasure on. So I'm going to go and eat all these red lights and break all these rules and all these laws. Not only will that hurt me, it will hurt my family, my wife, everybody around me because sin does that. Sin is a separator. One way, the elevator down to the fire pit, eternal exterminator. That's what sin does. Sin separates us from the grace and power of God and the goodness of God. You don't believe me? The word says that sin is the only thing really that separates us from a holy God. Nothing could separate us from his love but sin. Religion is do and don'ts without relationship. Rules without relationship breeds rebellion. Absolutely. And we see that we see that with the Israelites in the, in the you know when they were in the wilderness. 40 years, something that should have took four to eight weeks to get to where they were going. 40 years because of the rebellion, of the murmuring, complaining, of the not wanting to follow the rules of um, you know Moses going up um, to, to the mountain to meet with God. The commandments come down. When he comes down off the mountain, they're already worshiping an idol. It's crazy. But that's the sinful nature. And God showed it to us so that way we can know what triggers that. God's not leaving us guessing. This is not a guessing game. Life, um, and life in Christ is not a guessing game. He literally exposes things in our lives so that way we could deal with those things and others could see what we're dealing with because God loves us. He doesn't want to hide our sin. He wants to expose it so that way we could know what it is, what triggers it, and take it out. But focusing on sin management really never works. It never works. We can't manage our sin, right? Our sin was already managed, taken care of by the Lord himself. And I believe he's the only one that was able to eradicate sin. I don't think none of us could do that. If we could, we would, right? If we could have, we would have. Believe yourself to be a failure and you will behave like one. If you believe you're going to fail, you're going to fail. If you believe to be a failure, you're going to be a failure. If you believe to be addicted to something, something, although you might be chemically or, you know, uh, addicted to something, but you're going to act what you're going to act like what you're addicted to. If you focus on your addiction, if you're addicted to something, instead of focusing on the cure or instead of focusing on people who can help you, focusing on the Lord, going into his word, you're going to stay in that condition. I know a person that was they got they wanted to see what Jesus was all about. Right. And they always smoke and drink and all that stuff. They said, OK, I'm going to read the word until the desire for smoking and drinking goes away. And guess what happened? started reading the word they started reading the word and that desire for smoking and drinking went away and was replaced by the power of god's word i mean some people take this serious i take it serious you know what i mean if god is real and he is right why not test his word why not go to the source yourself you know oh i, I can't get over this struggle in my mind i can't get over this i can't get over that well go to the one who wants you to be delivered from those things that you're saying and listen you're saying that you can't get through this and you can't do that but you won't find that in the word of god the only thing that you can do is gain favor by god through religious acts through good deeds you can't get to heaven without going to jesus you can't meet the father without going through the son right you can't get forgiveness for your sin without going to the one who forgave us you can't have eternal salvation or eternal life without going to the one who promised it to us we can't do what we want to do and expect us to gain access into 
heaven or to gain access into the kingdom by what we want to do. Excuse me. God has his purpose. God has his plan. And we just want to live in that. Amen. It would save you a whole lot of heartache and pain. Turn around that you may be found and not on the ground, but heaven bound. Peace, a little spit for the gangster in every one of us. I feel like, amen, amen. So you spit rhymes too, right? Yeah, let's do it, man. Because we have to let ourselves know um, that sin is serious. And that we're not going to beat ourselves up thinking about how to manage our sin. Because the Bible is clear. We have no self-control. We have no self-control. If we had self-control, we would we want to need Holy Spirit God to help us in these areas of self-control. But with God, Holy Spirit God in you, Holy Spirit God, Holy Spirit God in me, we can we can move up. We can move forward. Amen. We could grow spiritually. And those sins that used to take us out all the time, it won't be it won't be so easy. First Timothy 1:15. Here is a trustworthy saying that deserves full acceptance. Christ Jesus came into the world to save sinners of whom I am the worst. First Timothy 1.15. That was Apostle Paul. That might seem like a contradiction to everything we've been talking about. But if you dig deeper, you see that Paul, the apostle, is affirming the sinfulness of his actions. But he's never denying God's grace. He's never denying God's power to change his behavior. He's never denying God saving him. Philippians 3, like passages, passages like in Philippians 3, Paul tells people to imitate him as he imitates God. He wouldn't tell them, he wouldn't tell them to imitate him if he was the worst sinner. You know, he was expressing how he felt about his sinful nature. People say, oh, look, you see, Apostle Paul says, you know, he's the top sinner, yet he's leading people. So he must he must be leading people to sin. No, that's kind of foolish for us to believe that any saint or any believer will lead somebody else to sin. That's actually how you could tell who's real and who's fake. If I'm up here telling everybody, oh, man, don't worry about the scriptures, you know, just um, do what you want to do. And sin a little bit. It's OK. Just come back to church Wednesday or Sunday and everything will be all right. I'm leading people to sin, and yet I'm calling myself a saint. That wouldn't match up. That wouldn't, that wouldn't hold any kind of weight in the discussion. So don't believe the hype. Believe in the word of God and move forward and grow spiritually. Apostle Paul is affirming his sinfulness. That's all he was doing of actions, his actions that were causing him to sin, right? Managing sin keeps us looking down in the dumps, right? And... Who has time for managing sin anyway? You're going to get tired out. You're going to get stressed out. You're going to get depressed. You're not going to want to go outside. If everything that, if everything you feel triggers your sinful nature, you're not going to go outside. You're not going to want to talk to nobody. You're going to turn into a hermit. And God said it's not good for man to be alone. We need fellowship. We need one another. We can't be cooped up. Can't be hiding out. No, we have to go out. And God wants us to deal with these things. Amen. Don't be afraid to deal with your own sinful nature. As a matter of fact, it's so personal, but like it's a personal war, it's an intense war, and it starts in your mind. But we have the mind of Christ. You already heard people say, don't follow your heart. Why? Because the heart is full of wickedness, you know, all that stuff. Well, we need to speak that in the past tense if you're born again. God changed our hearts. God changed our minds. Amen. And he changed basically our behavior, if you think about it, because the more you grow spiritually, the more you get to know the Lord and Savior, and the more you get to know Jesus, who he is, your behavior, vocabulary, everything's going to start changing. Supernatural change, right? Um, you're not going to have to force nothing. I didn't force me being what, the way I am right now. I'm still the same in a lot of ways, but I'm different in a whole lot more ways. Right? Same Sam, different man. I see. So, Rich Tyler, you have a comment. Sorry, this um, mouse is woo, going all over the place. Remember, although Mary was Jesus' earthly mother, but she cannot save us, but yet she herself had to wait in the upper room, as did the apostles, for the Holy Spirit to come upon them in baptism and fire. Yes, even the one Mary that gave birth to the Savior of the whole world had to wait for the promise of God. None of us are exempt. Um, we all have to wait. 
And we all have to trust and believe in who Jesus said he is and what God said he would do in my life and in your life. So everybody wanders. You know, I wander sometimes. You wander probably sometimes. You know, I don't know everybody intimately like that. But you have you ever tried to pray about something and then another thought will come into your mind? And you're like, why? <laughs> like, I'm trying to pray about something that's something serious. Or maybe, you know, you're trying to move up in your spiritual growth. You're trying to advance in the kingdom. And yet you have these thoughts that come out of nowhere. Well, we all wonder sometimes. Um, we always struggle against the flesh. You know what I mean? We have a lot more in common than what you might think. People of every race, every creed, every tribe, every tongue has a lot more in common than we really think. Because we're battling the flesh, all of us, the world, and Satan. So instead of seeing the Christian life as a struggle, right, to manage our sins, um, we should really be embracing the power and the thrill of being a believer in Christ in spite of our sin. So embrace who you are in Christ in spite of your sin. Yeah. Oh, you know, Sam, you're not perfect. Oh, thank you for reminding me. Um, you're not either. But we're not focused on our imperfection. We're going to be focused on the perfecter, the one who's perfecting us. Amen. Um, it's so easy to go and tell somebody, oh, you know, who do you think you are? Um, you're not holier than me. You're right. I believe when we see the same Holy Spirit, who has more Holy Spirit, you or me? We have the same Spirit that rose Jesus from the grave. Amen. That's why the baptism of the Holy Spirit is critical, I believe, because you will have boldness to live right. Amen. And you're going to have the want to live right. Amen. Uh, a sinful person without God doesn't have any intent on changing because they're enjoying the sin. They're enjoying that life. Hello, I was one of them. I don't know about you, but before I wasn't born a Christian, I was born into, I inherited um, sin when I was born. Amen. Sister Rachel says, yes, that happens all the time. Yep. So sin becomes more of a road bump, right? Overcome by the power of the spirit as we speed along toward Christ. So there's going to be bumps in the road of life. How many people know I lived on this earth so far 50 years? I've been through some bumps. What about you? Not everything is going to be like smooth sailing at all times. But if we focus on the next bump on the road, right, and that's where we're going to hit. People want to speak to the universe. I, I hear the younger generation say, oh, just speak to the universe. Listen, if the universe is your target, you're going to hit it all the time. But that's just the creation of God. Why don't you talk to the creator of the creation? Amen. And deal with the creator. Instead of just speaking into the universe, it sounds so like spiritual. Oh, I'm speaking to the universe. Great. That's what the enemy is saying to the, our younger generation now. Oh, just speak to the universe. Speak to a created thing. Okay. Why don't you speak to the creator? We have that um, opportunity to speak to the creator and not just speak to the universe. That's that, that, those terms that people fly around now. The more you starve your flesh and feed your spirit, man, then you will mature in strength. Yes. My pastors say, they say like this. Uh, my pastor Charles says, um, what you feed will grow, what you starve will die, something like that. Right? So let's not feed the need to sin. And let's feed the need to be in Christ. Feed in the word. Feed on the word. Get the word of God in us. The more I believe it like this, when we're managing, when we're talking about this whole sinful thing, the more of God's word we have in us, the more we will come out of our own mouth. And the power of God come, the power of God's word coming out of your own mouth, you you gonna realize like wow. You know, there was a story. I'll leave you with this because I gotta go. There was a story. Um, well, it was a personal story. It's a true story, actually. But I've said this a couple of times. If you follow me, you already know. Um, the, like in the first couple of years that I was saved, um, guess what the enemy was doing? He was trying to throw every single situation for me um, to go back to my old, you know, cheating ways. You know, I was a liar, a cheat, and all that stuff. So out of nowhere, he would drop these ideas in my mind. <clears throat> he would drop those same ideas in other people. There was one woman that she was successful, had money, um, was like a beach, a beach body woman, that type of situation. 
And she was always like, I would show her my ring. I said, listen, I'm not, I'm, I'm, you know, I'm a Christian man. I'm a married man. Oh, you know, you know, the type of woman that's, oh, that she felt like she could get any person she wanted because she had to influence the money, the looks, all that, that type of situation. And it came to a point where it got so bad that it was raining one day. And I used to work for a company called DHL. And I had to wait five o'clock at one of the bo- DHL boxes. You had to wait till five o'clock to scan that box in so you could leave the area and go back to the depot. This was um, in 2002 or 2003, maybe even longer than, I don't know. It was a long time ago, I'll tell you that. And um, here comes this woman um, with in the rain, an umbrella, uh, saying, oh, hey, you forgot two packages. And I was sick that day. I had a, a fever. This was before COVID. So this was years ago. I had a fever and I wasn't feeling well. So she noticed, said, well, what's, what's the matter? You don't look like you feel well. I said, yeah, I'm not feeling well. I pulled down the window, grabbed the two packages. I said, I'm not feeling well. She said, well, if you go over there, I was just parked next to, uh, next to the box. But ne- on the other side of the box was a, a bank, the, the banks that you could walk in. And it has the, the overhead. So you could literally lock yourself in the bank thing while you're doing your transaction. He said, well, if you go in there, I can make you feel better. I was like, whoa. So you know what I did? I pulled the window up and I said, you know what? I, I can't I can't focus on this anymore. Um, this is too, the temptation was growing. So I was like, I'm, I got something for her. Pulled down the window. You know what I did? I literally spoke the word. First, uh, first Corinthians chapter 10, verse 13. No temptation has seized me except what is common to man. And God is faithful. He will not let me be tempted beyond what I can bear. But when I am tempted, he will provide a way of escape so I can stand strong. I literally spoke that to her. You know what happened? She said, what are you doing? I said, I'm doing what I have to do right now. Because I'm not feeling good. I was weak, right, in my mind. And I wasn't feeling good. So that temptation was almost going to be stronger than my will to not do anything. So when I spoke that word, she was like, you're crazy. Guess what? And she never spoke to me, flirted with me again, never spoke to me again. The power of God to break those things, those patterns that try to come up in our lives. It was the word of God. It had nothing to do with me. I know it was crazy to her, but it was powerful to me. The power of God coming out. So I believe if I would not learn that scripture, that's my one of my life scriptures, and I hurled it out of my own mouth. I believe everything that the enemy was trying to throw at me through that person being used by demonic influence, I believe that would have not been broken. And I probably would not have been here right now speaking and preaching the gospel, right? So we have the word. We have the weapon. It's right. It's literally right in our hands. Get the Bible app. Speak. You know who you are better than I know who you are. But God even knows us better than we know ourselves. So he knows where our triggers are. He knows um, that managing sin really is not going to work. What's going to work is the power of his word, embracing who we are as saints, it's embracing who we are and identifying ourselves in Christ. And then God, through Holy Spirit, will help us the rest of the way. Sometimes I think we overcomplicate this thing. Uh, my transformation came by rejecting my worldly hangout friends until I was so filled with God and his word until those triggers didn't work anymore because of my heart was sold out for his precious love. I didn't want to commit adulterous relationships either um, uh, world anymore. Yeah. Yeah. And I did the same thing, my brother. I had to part ways with a whole lot of people. And you know what? I wasn't trying to, but God did it. People started saying I was crazy. When I got saved, oh, you're crazy. But it's crazy that people were saying I was crazy because before I was saved, I was really crazy. Like, it's crazy. But God is good. Amen. So the point of the story, right? The point of the whole morning Devo is that if you're trying to be the person who's trying to manage your sin and you're trying to say, well, eh, I can't do that. I can't do that. I better stay away from that. Okay. You're right. One part of it is right. We need to be to watch and pray. Watch and pray. But we also know that we have to embrace who we are in Christ. We're not focusing too much on our sinful nature. As a matter of fact, let's focus on the cross. You want to talk about sin? Focus on the one who died on the cross for me and for you. He took upon all the sin of the world upon himself, yet he himself did not sin. You could stay right there, hang out there for a little bit, 
because that's an amazing, amazing message. That's an amazing sacrifice that the Lord himself took for us. So don't think that God is punishing you. Never think that God is tempting you because God doesn't tempt, Lord, nor can he be tempted. But he would test us because he wants us to grow spiritually. So that was the main, believe it or not, the main focus of what I was trying to say today. And we see 1 Timothy 1, 15. Read that for yourself. Faithful is the saying and worthy of all exception that Christ Jesus came into the world to save sinners to save sinners, and Apostle Paul said he was the chief one of them, and because he was trying to let people know, listen, I'm still dealing with the sinful nature. What about you? He was just being honest, but he was never denying the power of salvation. He was never denying the power of God in his life. He wasn't causing other people to sin. He wasn't endorsing sin. None of that. He was just being honest with Timothy, being honest with the church, and being honest with us. Amen. And we need to do the same. We need to be honest with ourselves, honest with the church, and honest with our family. Let them know, listen, I haven't arrived in no place that I could, you know, be sinless. Right? Sinless. But I can sin less because I have Holy Spirit God in me. And Holy Spirit God doesn't sin. It's an amazing thing. We have one in us that does not sin. Yes, amen. The word, the word of God is our sword against the sin temptation. Yep incredible and that was the first time i learned that when it came out of my very own mouth i was i was happy man i was like oh that's all i had to do all this time because after a while you start entertaining those conversations a man with we can get distracted i can get distracted i can't speak for all men i could get distracted easily but i already know that but guess who else knows that satan the devil he knows that too so it freaks him out. I must freak him out when I'm when he's trying to distract me and I stay focused. You know what I mean? I drive a lot, so I already know how to stay focused on what's in front of me. Amen. And I'm starting to believe that God wired me that way. And he's teaching me over and over again, stay focused on what's in front of you. Amen. It's because you'll get to the destination quicker and safer, right? If you focus on what's in front of you instead of looking in the rearview mirror and seeing what's all behind you. Amen. If you take your eyes off the road and you literally turn your head and look back while you're driving 60, 70 miles an hour, uh, that's not going to be too good. Life sometimes goes so fast. And the enemy says, oh, look back. Says, no, you can't look back. Look forward. Look around you. Check your surroundings. You know the trigger points. We're not here to manage, be managers of our own sin or other people's sin. We're here to embrace who God calls us to be. We're here to embrace our sainthood. We're here to embrace our salvation. Amen. And live it out with fear and trembling, but it's ours. Own your salvation. Identify yourself with Christ. Amen. It's time for us to stand out. It's time for us to speak out. It's time for us to come out the closet, my brothers and sisters. Let's do this. And let's not be afraid of the sinful nature. Everybody has it. Um, the Pope has it. The president has it. Your pastor has it. A bishop, apostle, prophets, evangelists, teachers, they all have the sinful nature. Okay. I'm almost going to say let's get over it, but I know that's not an easy thing to get over. But let's not focus on that. We know it's there. Everybody in the world knows it's there. Let's focus and embrace the fact that we're born again. We are more than conquerors through Christ Jesus. We are the head, not the tail. We are above, not below. We're the lender, not the borrower. We are the righteousness of Christ. We have the nature of God. Amen. The supernatural nature of God through Christ Jesus. Amen. We are saints um, that sometimes sin. We're not sinners saved by grace anymore once you're born again. If you're not on this side of the eternal uh, message, amen, come on over. Amen. All you have to do is admit that you're a sinner. Believe in God's word. And confess Jesus Christ as your personal Lord and Savior. And the process will begin in your life. Eternal life is a long time. It's infinity times forever, right? So we have this short space on this side of eternity. So make a decision. Make your decisions now. I respect everybody's decision. It just hurts me when they want to decide to reject God, the one who created us, the one who loves us, the one who gives us uh, opportunity for eternal life, the one who wants to forgive us for our sins, the one who wants to grow us spiritually. When people reject that, all the good stuff, man, I'm like, 
Um, they just don't know. I didn't know either, but thank God for his grace and his mercy upon my life that I got to know who he was. I am a holy terrorizing force. Amen. Amen. Every gift needs batteries. Think about it. <laughs> yep. And we got to stay charged, man, and on fire and lit for the cause of God, for the cause of Christ, and then for the kingdom. So management of your sin, managing your sin really never works. That was my whole point, believe it or not. Amen. And thank you, Jesus, for reminding me of the power of your word spoken through um, your vessels. Amen. So God bless you. God keep you. I hope you're encouraged. I hope you have a great day. I think it's nice out there. I haven't been out yet. Um, but amen. It's nice. So we're going to continue moving forward, right? So God bless you. God keep you. And remember always that God is good. Peace.